Good day class. You're welcome to our physics class this today. And we shall be looking at the topic density and up trust. So when you hear the word density, what does it refer to? When we talk about density, we are talking about the mass per unit volume of a substance. So the density of a substance is defined as per unit volume. So we are saying that density is equal to mass over volume. The density is more like saying how bulky a particular substance is. So this density is also referred to as rho and the unit of density is kilogram per meter cubed. This is the unit of density. The SI unit of mass here is kilogram. The SI unit of volume here is meter cubed. And so when you combine that, you will have this. Now we look at relative density. When we talk about relative density, you are comparing the density of a body with the density of water. And generally, the density of water is 1000 kg per meter cube. So we are saying that the density of water is 1000 kg per meter cubed. So we are comparing the density of a substance to a known density. So we say that relative density is equal to density of the substance over the density of water. Or it can be taken as the mass or the weight of the substance over the mass or weight of an equal volume of water. We shall look at several questions that would need us to use this formula and don't forget that we need to understand these few terms before we can solve questions now density is measured by knowing the volume of a body either using a formula or by displacing the volume of the object in a measuring cylinder with that statement what exactly do we mean we are saying that for you to know the density of a body is either we have a body which is which is regular a regular body is a body that we can easily calculate the volume by a particular formula. For instance, volume of a cube is the length times the length times length, or you know the side times side times side. That is the volume of a cube. So this uh, this cube is ex an example of a regular solid, and we can easily calculate the volume. But when we have an irregular solid like a stone, to calculate the volume, we make use of a measuring cylinder, of which contains some quantity of water and this measuring cylinder is graduated and so when you drop the irregular shape body for instance a stone inside it it's going to displace some volume of water now that volume of water that is displaced is the same thing as the volume of this body and so when we've known the volume we calculate we would measure the mass making use of a, a beam balance or a weighing balance and then we we'll calculate the we can easily calculate the density now we'll go to an important aspect which we call Archimedes principle in Archimedes principle we talk about a Greek scientist who discovered up trust but we know that for instance when you are trying to when you are fetching water and you lower a bucket inside water it appears to be very light when the bucket is still inside the water the bucket is inside the water and so that means it has water but then when you attempt to bring up the bucket it becomes very heavy while the bucket was inside the water it was lighter but when it was about to come out it was what it was heavier now it was lighter because it was lighter when it was inside the water because there's an upward force that is exerted by the water on that bucket you understand so that upward force is what is referred to as what up trust so it is a result of up trust that caused the bucket inside the well to become lighter now with that so let us have a diagram of such so if we have this as a well so here is a bucket inside a well of water this bucket has its own weight, which we call W. Now, while it is inside the water, 
the water exerts an upward force on this bucket of water and that upward force is what we have called the uptrust so while you are trying to pull this rope you will find out that it is easier to pull while it is inside the water and so we are going to say that the real weight minus the uptrust is equal to the tension that's the weight minus the uptrust equal to the tension while we are trying to pull it up right so the uptrust is known as a loss in weight because it made this bucket to appear as if it is not that heavy and could be easily pulled up now it is also referred to as weight of water displaced so uptrust is the same thing as loss in weight and it's also the same thing as what weight of water displaced and when we're talking about weight of water displaced this one we can easily understand it when we are talking about let's say a stone that is thrown inside the water you know the, the stone is going to displace its own volume when you measure the weight of the water that was displaced you know that that's poured from this container that weight of the water is the same thing as the uptrust that the water has on the stone now there are some other derivatives of relative density that we need to know about there are some other derivatives for relative density based on the archimedes principle that we've just discussed and it is that the relative density of a solid is equal to the weight of an object while it is in air over the apparent loss of weight when it is under water the apparent loss of weight under water and that is more like the uptrust the relative density of a liquid is equal to the weight of liquid displaced over the weight of water displaced so when we are trying to measure the relative density of a liquid we will compare it with the weight of water displaced or it is also said that the relative density of a liquid is also equal to the uptrust in liquid over the uptrust in water all right so we want to talk about floating objects when an object is inside water for instance a boat that is cruising on water now the boat is able to float because it has been able to displace its own weight of fluid from the water so what we mean now is that the weight of this particular body now it is able to float because it has displaced a volume of water which is its own weight so for a body to float its uptrust should always be the to be equal to the weight of the body so we are instituting here that a body floats when the weight of body is equal to the uptrust and what did we say uptrust is uptrust is the upward force so what do we say uptrust is uptrust is the upward force that is exerted by this water on this body so as this weight is going down the uptrust is going up so we are saying that this is weight and then uptrust is pushing it up so that means that w will be equal to what uptrust before a body can float now there are several applications of flotation for instance if, if a balloon that floats in air or a ship or a, a boat like this the iceberg that is able to float on water and so on now the hydrometer is used for measuring the density of liquids so now i want to solve questions under density and uptrust question one says that you should convert the density of 0 0.2 gram per cm cubed to si units here is gram per cm cubed this is not the si unit of density the si unit of density is kilogram per meter cube and so in questions relating to any topic in physics you will be required to work with the si units and so it's important to know how this is done you can refer to our class on measurements in physics to understand how this can be easily done but then we shall work on this so we have 0 0.2 for instance is in gram now to change from gram to kilogram what do we do we will divide by 1000 all right so that this one is for changing from gram to what to kilogram so if you want to change from centimeter to 
meter, what do you do? To do that, you will divide by 100. But in this case, we are talking about cubed, meaning raised power 3, raised power 3. You don't just divide by 100, rather, you divide by 100 raised power 3. And 100 raised power 3 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, now what do we do now? So, we have 0 0.2 gram to kilogram. And we said we divide by 1000. So, we have 0 0.2 divided by what? By 1000. And then here, we are changing from cm cubed to meter cubed. Now, this cm cubed, this is what it looks like 0 0.2 gram over cm cubed. It is already divided by cm cubed over here. And so, when you are not converting it from this cm cubed into meter cubed, because it's already down, you can't put it down again by saying 100 raised power 3, which is this one. So, you can't say divide, multiply by 100 raised power 3 again. Rather, you bring this one from here up. Why? Because it is the opposite of divided. So, it's going to be 0 0.2 times 100 over 3 divided by what? 1000. I hope you understand what we are talking about here. Let me repeat myself. We are saying that we have it as 0 0.2 gram per cm cube, right? Now it is divided by cm cube here. And when you say divided and divided, it's going to change towards multiplication. So instead of you coming here to divide 0 0.2 by 100 raised power 3, again, it will bring it up to become 100 raised power 3. And so when you have this, we'll express it in the simplest form. And that will give us 0 0.2 multiplied by 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, over 1, 2, 3. All this cancels this. And so we are left with 0 0.2 times 1000. So you multiply 0 0.2 by 1000 to give us 200 kilogram per meter cube as the final answer. Next question says, find the density of the material of a cylinder of base radius 0 0.1 meter and height 0 0.5 meter if the mass of the cylinder is 44 kilogram. What kind of material is this drum likely to be made of? Alright, so in this question, we are asked to find the density of the material and then the base radius 0 0.1 meter and it has a height of 0 0.5 meter those are the parameters then we're told that the mass of the cylinder itself is 44 kilogram now this information we know that density equals to mass over volume we're giving the mass here but we need to find the volume of the part of this cylinder and so the volume of a cylinder volume of a cylinder is equal to pi r squared h Pi is 22 over 7, the radius is 0 0.1 squared, multiplied by height, which is 0 0.5. So when we calculate 22 times 0 0.1 squared times 0 0.5, we would have 0 0.11 divided by 7, and that will give us 0 0.0157. So here is the volume. Density equals to the mass is 44. And the volume is 0 0.0157. And so the density will leave us with what? 2800 kilogram per meter cubed. Now we're asked the kind of material that the cylinder is made of. So we are to compare this density with the standard densities of several substances or bodies. And we note that the density of aluminium here is 2700 kilogram per meter cube so we are going to say that the cylinder is made of a material that is similar to aluminium question says if 32 gram of kerosene of density 0 0.80 gram per cm cubed are mixed with 8 gram of water what is the density of the resulting mixture here we have that we have kerosene and it has a mass of 32 gram right and then it has a density of 0 0.8 density of 0 0.80 gram per cm cubed all right and then it is mixed with water and the water has a mass of 8 gram 
and then density of water is 1 gram per cm cubed although that is not given in the question but it is a reference point so it is to be known now we're told to find the density of the resulting mixture now when these two are mixed we would have said that the density will be addition of 1 plus 0 0.8 then you find the average but no it is not like that but what we need to do is first we'll, we'll add the mass we'll determine the volume then we'll add the volume and we'll derive the resultant density and so from the first one from kerosene we need to determine the volume we know that density equals to mass over volume so volume equals to what mass over density the, dens the mass is 32 over 0 0.8 and that will leave us with 40 cm cubed then water the volume of water mass of water over density of water the mass of water is 8 over 1 so we have 8 cm cubed so total mass of mixture the mixture we have here the mass is 32 and 8 so we have 32 for kerosene and 8 for water which gives us about 40 grams and total volume of mixture the mixture the volume is 40 plus 8 so we have 40 plus 8 and that leaves us with 48 cm cubed hence density of mixture will be mass over volume which is 40 over 48 which is 0 0.833 gram per cm cubed that is the density of which we can convert to kilogram per meter cubed and how do we do that it can be done by now to convert gram to kilogram we are going to divide by 1000 so we have 0 0.833 divided by 1000 and then this is cm cubed to change cm cubed to meter cubed we are going to multiply this by by 1 million and so when we multiply it the final answer is 833 kilogram per meter cubed so this or this will be the answers next question says a piece of metal mass 3.6 kilogram is suspended from a spring balance what is the reading of the balance a with the metal in air so we have to find it in newton b with the metal in water c with the metal in brine and d what is the density of a liquid in which it gives a reading of 33 newton taking density of brine to be 1200 kilogram per meter cubed and density of metal as 9000 kilogram per meter cubed so here is a long and simple question so let's take our parameters we're told that the mass of the metal is 3.6 kilogram when it's suspended from the spring balance now we have to find a the reading on the balance in newton we have to determine the weight of the metal in air so we have that weight equals to mass times acceleration due to gravity and here the mass is 3.6 and then acceleration due to gravity is 10 so we have this as 36 newton that is the first answer b now we're told that we should find the weight of the metal in water so when you have such metal that was deep inside water it's going to have a volume right so this metal has a volume and that volume will displace its own volume of, of liquid so first is to determine the volume of this metal we are aware that we are given the density of the metal density of metal as 9000 kilogram per meter cubed so we have density equals to the mass over volume so the volume will be the mass over density here the mass is 3.6 and our volume is 9000 all right so we have mass of 3.6 of meter so when you divide this we will have 0 0.0004 meter cubed that is the volume of the metal and this volume is going to be useful all around this question so we are saying that this is the volume of water that will be displaced as well so volume of water displaced 
is also 0.0004 meter cube, which is the same thing as the volume of the metal. We should also take note that when this water is displaced, the weight of the water that is displaced is equal to the upthrust. So you need to refer to our explanation of upthrust. And that upthrust is also equal to the weight, is equal to the loss in weight of this particular metal. So if that is the case, that means that the weight of water displaced is equal to upthrust. And that upthrust is also equal to the loss in weight of the metal loss in weight so that is when you dip the metal inside the water it's going to experience the weight will not be as high as it was before and it's because of the upthrust on this on the metal now that upthrust is equal to the weight of the water that is displaced so if that is the case we can now say that the mass you know we can derive our mass from our weight so we can say that the mass of water displaced is equal to the density of water times the volume of water now the density of water we know as 1000 kilogram per meter cubed times the volume of water that was displaced which is what 0.0004 meter cubed and so when we multiply this we have 0.4 kilogram so weight of water displaced will be the mass times acceleration which is 0.4 times 10 and that will be what 4 newton so if that is the weight of water that was displaced so the weight of metal in water now will be its real weight so let me have it as its real weight minus the weight of water which was displaced and we said that weight that was displaced is the upthrust. So the real weight minus the upthrust. So the real weight of this metal is 36. And the upthrust, which is weight of water that was displaced, is 4 newton. Alright, so we have it as 32 newton. So this is the weight of the metal in water. The part says that we should determine the weight of the metal in brine. First, when the metal was suspended in the brine it displays its own volume so we have it that volume of brine displays is also what 0 0.0004 meter cubed all right now we are told that the density of brine in the question is 1200 kilogram per meter cubed so next is how to determine the mass so we can determine the mass from the density and volume of the brine which was displaced we have the mass equal to density times volume our density over here is 1200 times volume which is 0 0.0004 and so when you multiply this you will have you have 0 0.48 kilogram hence weight of brine this is the mass of the brine that was displaced so the weight of brine is mass times acceleration due to gravity that's 0 0.48 multiplied by 10 and that will leave us with what 4.8 newton now we should take note that weight of brine that was displaced is equal to the upthrust this is the weight of brine that was displaced and we say this weight is also equal to the what to the upthrust and this upthrust is also the same thing as the what to the loss in weight of the metal so we will have it that weight of metal in brine is equal to its weight in air the real weight which is the weight in air minus the loss in weight in weight which is 36 minus 4.8 and that would give 31.2 newton so that is the weight of the body in brine the d aspect says that what is the density of a liquid in which it gives a reading of 33 newton so we are saying that this same metal what if it is put in another liquid of unknown density and with a reading of 33 newton all right so what we'll do is we know the weight of the metal in air and we know the weight of the metal in this liquid hence 
the loss in weight will be the real weight in air minus the weight in the liquid which is 36 minus 33 and that's what 3 newton now this loss in weight is the up thrust so this loss in weight is the mass of the metal itself so we will have it that so we said this loss in weight is the same thing as what the up thrust so we can determine the mass of this liquid so mass of the liquid is you know we say that density equals to mass over volume we can derive the mass of the liquid from here where we know that so the mass will be weight over acceleration so that's weight over acceleration due to gravity that's 3 divided by 10 and that's 0.3 kilogram right so 0.3 kilogram is the mass of the liquid so the volume of the liquid that was displaced is going to be the same as the volume of the metal that was put inside it and originally we've got the volume of the metal to be 0.0004 meter cubed hence we can calculate the density of the liquid by having it as mass over volume which is 0.3 over 0.0004 and that will give us 750 kilogram per meter cube so here is the density of a liquid in which the metal is placed here comes this next question it says an object of mass of volume 4 meter cubed is totally immersed in a liquid of density 1030 kilogram per meter cubed calculate the up thrust of liquid in the object so here we state our parameters we're told that volume of object is 4 meter cubed and the density okay and it was immersed in a liquid of this density so density of liquid is 1030 kilogram per meter cubed now i want to take note that when you immerse this object inside this liquid and it enters into the liquid it's going to displace its own volume meaning that the volume of liquid that was displaced will also be 4 meter cubed so from here we can easily calculate the mass of the liquid so mass of liquid equal to density times volume our density is 1030 multiplied by 4 and that will leave us with 4120 kilogram now we should take note that the mass of this liquid that was displaced is equal to the up thrust of the liquid on the object. So we have it that weight of liquid displaced is the same thing as the up thrust on the object. Finding the weight from mass will be 4120 times 10 because we have it that weight equals to mass times acceleration. Here's our mass and acceleration due to gravity is 10 and when we multiply this we have 41,200 newton that is the final answer now this this next question says that a body of mass 20 gram appears to have a mass of 13 gram in oil and 12 gram in water what is the relative density of oil so we have our parameters first mass of body when it is in air is 20 gram and this 20 gram when changed to kilogram will be 0 0.02 kilogram how do you get that that's 20 divided by 1000 weight of body is what to 0 0.2 newton then we're told that the mass of body in oil so mass of body in oil we're told it is 13 gram and when we convert it to kilogram, that will be 13 divided by 1000. That will leave us with 0 0.013 kilogram. Hence, weight in oil will be 0 0.013 times 10. That is 0 0.13 newton. So that is the weight of the body in oil. Next, mass of body in water is 12 gram. So 12 gram converted to kilogram, that will give us. 0 0.012 kilogram that is by dividing 12 by 1000 
then we will change this kilogram mass into weight so that means the weight in water will be 0 0.12 newton which is gotten by multiplying 0 0.012 with 10 now for us to get the relative density of the oil we have a formula that says the relative density of a liquid for instance is equal to the up thrust in the liquid over the up thrust in water so here is the formula we are going to apply now the up thrust in liquid can be gotten by so the up thrust in liquid can be gotten by this this is the weight of the body in air and this is the weight of the body in in oil and our oil here our liquid here is the oil so it is appropriate that we replace the liquid with oil so the up thrust here is going to be weight in weight in air minus weight in oil that is 0 0.2 minus 0 0.13 and that would give 0 0.07 newton so if you don't understand what the up thrust in oil means it means that when you have the weight of the body outside air it was 0 0.2 which is higher and when you put it inside the oil it's it lessens it looks like the body does not weigh much so the up thrust is the reduction in the weight of this body and the reduction can be gotten by saying 0 0.2 minus 0 0.13 all right then we have the up thrust in water so when this same body now is removed from oil and it is placed in water it also experiences some up thrust and the up thrust is going to be its weight in air minus its weight in water and so we'll have it as 0 0.2 minus 0 0.12 and that will be 0 0.08 newton so for us to get the relative density of the liquid we have the up thrust in the liquid that's oil which is 0 0.07 and then the up thrust in water which is 0 0.08 and that will leave us with 0 0.875 as the relative density of the oil so for this next question it says a body of mass 50 gram is weighed in water and then in a liquid of unknown density if the apparent masses of masses in water and liquid are 46 gram and 45.5 gram respectively find a the density of the body b the density of the liquid so first let us state our parameters the mass of the body in air 50 gram and this same mass when, we, when it's converted to kilogram will be 0 0.05 kilogram that is 50 divided by 1000 now this is changed into weight so weight in air will be 0 0.05 times 10 that will be what 0 0.5 newton then the mass in the mass of this body in water was given as 46 gram and 46 gram when it's converted to kilogram will be 0 0.046 kilogram and this kilogram can be converted into weight so the weight in water will be 0 0.46 Newton that is 0 0.046 multiplied by 10. Next, the mass in liquid. Now, this liquid we're not giving the relative density, it is 45.5 gram. And when this is converted into kilogram, it will give 0 0.0455 kilogram. And this can be converted into Newton. The weight in the liquid will be 0 0.0455 multiplied by 10 and that will be 0 0.455 newton now i want us to know that when this body was in air it was 0 0.5 newton and when it was placed inside water the mass has reduced to 0 0.46 newton meaning that there is a reduction in 
wait. So when it was placed inside water, the water had an up thrust on it, and that up thrust is equal to its weight in air minus its weight in water, and that will give us what 0.04 newton. Now you see this up thrust, which caused the reduction in the weight, is also equal to the weight of water displaced. So we are saying that this up thrust is the same thing as weight of water displaced. This is the weight of water that was displaced. We are looking for the density of the body, right? The density of the body equals to the mass of the body over the volume of the body. We are giving the mass of the body, quite alright. But we are not giving the volume. So for us to get the volume, we can get it from all this. Alright, so we have it that this is the weight of water that was displaced. This weight can be converted into the mass, such that we have the mass of the body. So this is 0.04 Newton. This is the weight of water that was displaced. And from here, we can derive the mass of water that was displaced by saying that the mass equals to the weight, weight over acceleration due to gravity. And that will give 0.004 kilogram. Now from this, we have it that the density of water equals to the mass of water over volume of water. The density of water is 1000. Mass of water here that was displaced is 0.004 over volume of water. So it is this volume of water that was displaced that would help us to get the volume of the, of the mass, the volume of the body. So volume of water is equal to 0.004 over 1000 and that would give us 4 times 10 raised power minus 6 so in meter cubed now this is the volume of water that was displaced and the volume of this water that was displaced was as a result of this board that was placed inside it so meaning that this volume of water was displaced by the volume of the body hence the volume of the body will also be this that's 4 times 10 raised power minus 6 meter cubed so we have succeeded in getting the volume we can now have it that density of body will be the mass of the body when it was in air which was 0 0.05 that's 0 0.05 over the volume of the body which is what we have got here that is 4 times 10 raised power minus 6 and that would give us 12,500 kilogram per meter cubed and since all our questions were given in gram per in gram and centimeter cubed it is advisable that we convert this also to gram per centimeter cubed and how do we do that we will do that by by multiplying 12,500 by 1,000 and then dividing by 1 million the 1,000 is the result of the kilogram kilo that is 1000 then meter minus 3 we want to convert it to centimeter minus 3 we divide by this and so when we divide it we have 12.5 gram per centimeter cube so that is the answer all right so the b passage should find the density of the liquid and to find the density of the liquid we need to get a mass of liquid that was displaced mass of displaced liquid mass of liquid displaced over the volume of also the same liquid that was displaced so when we get that we can easily get the density first is that when this mass was in air it was 0 0.5 newton as the weight when it was the mass in the liquid the weight reduced to 0 0.455 hence it has an up thrust on the body and the up thrust is 0 0.5 minus 0 0.455 newton and that would give us 0 0.045 newton so here is the up thrust of the liquid on this particular body and we are saying that this up thrust is also equal to the weight of the liquid that was displaced right so we said it is what same thing as the weight displaced don't forget we are looking for the mass displayed displaced so we can get the mass from this 0 0.045 newton by changing it into kilogram and that is done by dividing it by 10. So we have 0 0.0045 kilogram as the as the mass. So here is the mass gotten. Next is to determine the volume. 
initially we've gotten the volume of the body that was displaced in A when we consider the volume of water so the volume of the liquid displaced is also going to be the volume of the body and that is 4 times 10 raised power minus 6 meter cubed hence so the density of the body now can be derived by saying the mass which is 0 0.0045 over the density which is 4 times 10 raised power minus 6 when we divide this we have 1125 kilogram per meter cubed as the answer but since we are giving our parameters in gram per centimeter cubed it's advisable to get our answer in that form so to convert this into gram per centimeter cubed we we'll say 1125 multiplied by 1000 over 1 million and when we do this, we we'll have 1.125 gram per centimeter cubed. So we could take this as the density, or we take this as the density. Then the next question says an empty relative density bottle has a mass of 30 gram. When filled with paraffin, its mass is 70 gram. Calculate the mass of bottle when it is filled with water. Relative density of paraffin is 0 0.8. So let's take our parameters. We are told that mass of bottle is 30 gram. That is while it is empty. Then it was filled with paraffin. Meaning that mass of bottle plus paraffin is what? 70 gram. Meaning the paraffin inside it will be 70 minus 30. And that is 40 gram. So that is the mass of only the paraffin. And in the question, we are told that the relative density of paraffin is 0 0.8. Now, there is a formula that says that relative density of a substance is equal to the mass of substance over mass of equal volume of water. In this case, our substance is what? Paraffin. Now, we are told that the relative density of paraffin is 0 0.8 because that's the substance so we have 0 0.8 and then the mass of paraffin inside the bottle is 40 so we can get the mass of an equal volume of water to be x and so we'll have it that x equal to 40 divided by 0 0.8 and that will give us 50 gram after you have gotten this mass of equal volume of water now we're told that we should find the mass of the bottle when it is half filled take notes we didn't say that in the question but when it is half filled with water so in this case this is the full mass of water all right but half mass of water that will be poured inside that particular container will be 50 divided by 2 and that is what 25 gram so if 25 gram is poured into the bottle and we know that the bottle has a mass of 30 gram so we we'll now say that total mass will now be 30 plus 25 gram and so that will give us 55 gram and that will be our answer that is the mass of the what of the bottle when it is half filled with water all right so this this next question says an object of volume one meter cubed and mass two kilogram is totally immersed in a liquid of density one kilogram per meter cubed calculate its apparent weight acceleration due to gravity is 10 meter per second squared so we have our parameters as volume of object is one meter cubed mass of object is given as two kilogram and we're given the density of the liquid so density of liquid to be one kilogram per meter minus three all right so the idea about this question is we are told to find the apparent weight that is the weight of the body when it was inside the liquid you know that the weight outside the liquid can easily be gotten from here where we have that the mass of the of the object is two kilogram so weight of the object in air will be 2 times 10 that is 2 
kilogram which is mass times acceleration due to gravity and that's what 20 newton so this is the real weight of the object in air but when it was placed inside the liquid what is going to be the weight that's what we have to determine and for us to determine this so we need to determine some other things now from here we need to determine the mass of the liquid that was displaced and some other things so let's proceed here we're given that the, the volume of the object is one meter cubed and so when it was immersed in the liquid it's going to displace its own volume hence volume of liquid displaced is also one meter cubed so if this is the volume of liquid displaced and we've been given the density of the liquid hence we can find the mass so mass of the liquid will be the density of the liquid times the volume of the liquid the density of the liquid is one and the volume of the liquid is one and so we are left with what one kilogram so the mass of the liquid that was displaced is one kilogram if this is the mass hence the weight of the liquid will be what 10 newton how did we get the 10 newton because we have that one kilogram converted to weight is 1 times 10 that's 10 newton so this is the weight of the liquid that was displaced so this 10 newton that we have over here is also the same thing as the loss in weight of the body so the apparent weight you can have it as this is equal to its real weight which is this minus its loss in weight which is 10 so we have 20 minus 10 so the apparent weight is 10 newton next question says a copper cube weighs 0 0.25 newton in air 0 0.17 newton when completely immersed in paraffin oil and 0 0.15 newton when completely immersed in water the ratio of up thrust in oil to up thrust in water is dash we have a parameters that copper in air is 0 0.25 newton and the same copper when it was immersed in paraffin in paraffin oil it gives us 0 0.17 newton and this same copper when it was immersed in water it gives us a weight of 0 0.15 newton now the ratio of the up thrust in oil so we can get the up thrust in oil by saying up thrust in oil is equal to weight in air 0 0.25 minus weight in oil that's 0 0.17 newton and that would give 0 0.08 newton then up thrust in water is equal to weight in air minus weight in water which is 0 0.25 minus 0 0.15 and that will be 0 0.1 newton so the idea of all this is to get the ratio of the up thrust in oil to the up thrust in water so we now have that up thrust in oil that is the paraffin oil over up thrust in water which is 0 0.08 over 0 0.1 now we could depending on the option we're given the answer could be 0 0.08 ratio 0 0.1 but to have it in the proper way it's to take out this decimal and have it in a fraction form so to have it in fraction form we move this decimal out of here move it one two so that it will be in front of it then because you move this two times you move this decimal two times too so you have one and zero over here and so when you reduce this to its lo lowest fraction you have four over five so the answer is four ratio five the yeah, next question says a piece of cork floats in a liquid what fraction of its volume will be immersed in the liquid given that the density of the cork is 0 0.25 times 10 to the power 3 kilogram per meter cubed and density of the liquid is 1.25 times 10 to the power 3 kilogram per meter cubed now in this question it's quite straightforward all we're given is the densities of the cork and liquid so to find the fraction of its volume immersed in the liquid 
we have it as density of cork over density of the liquid. The density of cork is 0 0.25 times 10 raised to the power 3 and the density of the liquid is 1.25 times 10 raised to the power 3. And so when we divide this, we have 0 0.2. So the fraction that is the mass, you have that 0 0.2, or you change it into fraction, which will be 2 over 10. That's 1 over 5. So it is 1 over 5 of its fraction. So you can have this as answer 0 0.2 or 1 over 5 of its volume is what is immersed in the liquid. Here, the next question says the relative density of gold is 19.2. The volume of 2.4 kg of gold is what? Given that the density of water is 10 raised per 3 kg per meter cubed. Alright, so in this question, we are given the relative density of gold to be 19.2. We are given the volume of the gold. Now, we are asked to find the volume of the gold. If it has a mass of 2.4 kg, what we need to do is, we are looking for the volume of gold all right to get the volume of the gold we may need to compare it with volume of displaced water and this is what i mean we have a formula that says the relative density of a solid is equal to the mass of the solid over mass of equal volume of water so when this mass is immersed inside water is going to displace its own volume the relative density of the gold here now is 19.2 the mass of gold here is 2.4 over mass of equal volume of water which is unknown so we have that as x and so x equal to 2.4 divided by 19.2 so 2.4 divided by 19.2 and that would yield 0 0.125 kilogram now this is the mass of an equal volume of water we are given the density of water to be what 1000 kilogram per meter cubed knowing that this is the mass of water what will be the volume of water if this is the mass we have that volume equal to mass over density mass of water is 0 0.125 and the density of water is 1000 and so when we divide this we would have 1.25 times 10 raised to the power minus 4 meter cubed now this is the volume of water that was displaced and this same volume is the same volume of the gold so we have it as volume of gold also is 1.25 times 10 raised to the power minus 4 meter cubed all right so here comes the next question it says the density of a certain oil on frying becomes 0 0.4 kilogram per meter cubed with a volume of 20 meter cubed what will be its initial volume when its initial density is 0 0.8 kilogram per meter cubed assuming no loss of oil due to spillage now in this question we're giving the density of oil after it was fried so fried oil has a density of 0 0.4 kilogram per meter cubed and then the volume of the fried oil is 20 meter cubed now the density of the unfried oil is 0 0.8 kilogram per meter cubed we're asked to find the initial volume of unfried oil and so what we need to do here is we have the volume of fried oil we have the density of fried oil so we can get the mass of fried oil from here and when we get the mass of fried oil since mass will not will not change the mass remains constant since there's no loss of oil the only thing is just that the density is what's changed and so mass that we get here is the mass that we use here so let's get into doing that now so you can say that mass of fried oil will be the density of fried oil times its volume 
density of fried oil is 0.4 multiplied by its volume which is 20 and that will give us 8 kilogram that is the mass so we said the mass remains constant meaning that this same mass is the mass of unfried oil and that is what 8 kilogram hence volume of unfried oil will be equal to its mass over the density its mass is 8 and the density is 0 0.8 and that would give us 10 kilogram per meter cubed this next question says that a plastic sphere floats in water with 50% of its volume submerged if it floats in glycerin with 40% of its volume submerged the density of glycerin is what? taking the density of water to be 1000 kg per meter cubed so in this question let's state our parameters now we're told that the volume that was submerged was 50% of the entire volume so that is more like say 50 over 100 and 50 over 100 is the same as what 0 0.5 so 0 0.5 of the entire volume so if 0 0.5 is the volume if that is the case this volume is the volume of the plastic that means it has displaced this same volume of water so that means that this is also is volume of sphere and it's also volume of water displaced then for glycerin it displaced 40 percent of glycerin and 40 percent is same as 40 over 100 and that is the same thing as what 0 0.4 now if that is the case it means that this is also the volume of the sphere in the glycerin right and this is of the sphere and this is also the volume of glycerin that was displaced so what we'll do in order to solve this question is to determine the mass so in this question we can determine the mass of the water that was displaced so if you determine the mass we know that mass is equal to density times volume the density of water is 1000 and the volume of the sphere is 0 0.5 okay so we have it as mass equal to 1000 times the volume which is what 0 0.5 so 1000 multiplied by 0 0.5 that gives us 500 kilogram that is the mass of water that was displaced but let us take note that a body will float if it displaces its own mass under flotation so we are saying here that the mass of this sphere which displaced this volume of liquid is also the same thing as the mass of the liquid that was displaced so if this is the mass of water that was displaced this is also the mass of the sphere so mass of sphere and take note that it is still the same mass of sphere that was taken and put in glycerin meaning that in this question the mass remains constant so we shall use this mass again for this for glycerin we have this as its volume all right so volume of glycerin is 0 0.4 and the mass of the glycerin is what 500 kilogram we are told to determine the density of glycerin so we have it here that density equal to mass over volume here is the mass 500 over 0 0.4 and this will give us 1250 kilogram per meter cubed so take note that in this question we are not really really told that this is the volume but we're giving this to have an idea of what the volume which was submerged will look like likewise this glycerin this 40 percent here is not the actual volume that was submerged but just give us an idea of what was submerged